Hello everyone and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we'll be taking a look at Void Particles. Voids, if you didn't know, is an artificial life form developed by Craig Reynolds in 1986. What it does is simulate the behavior of birds, hence the name Voids. The Voids framework is used in a lot of computer graphics to create realistic flocks of birds, schools of fish, and herds of animals. One interesting fact is that in the original game of Half-Life, it was used to create those weird bird-looking creatures near the end of the game. Now getting back to Blender, you can actually access this Boyd's physics if you go over to the particle system, scroll down to the physics tab, and change it over to Boyd's. It might look a little bit complicated at first, but once you get a feel for it, it's actually not that hard. To summarize Boyd's, what they do is they try to avoid collision objects, they try to reach their goals, and fly away from predators. And this is all according to the Boyd brain. How it works is with a set of rules. The order of the rules is also very important. The particles will try to follow the rules in order, but sometimes another rule will take precedence. For example, if you have a predator in your scene, the Boyd could kind of forget about the flock rule and just run away from it, even though it's instructed not to. To add a predator, you can go over to the Boyd brain and underneath this button here, you can click on the avoid rule. If you select an object in the target menu, the particles will actually move away from the predator. This also works very well if you use the Boyd force field. If you increase the strength of the force field, the particles will move away faster from the object. Now before we get into anything else, let's go over to the settings for the movement. There are two sections here for air and land. The settings are exactly the same for each and they're pretty easy to understand. The three checkboxes at the top allow you to choose if you want your particles to fly around the scene, walk on land, or of course climb objects. Now let's get into the settings. The max speed, of course, is the maximum velocity that the particles can move. The min airspeed is the minimum speed that the particles must move during a animation. This is also relative to the max airspeed. For example, if you have a minimum airspeed of 1 and a max airspeed of 50, the particles will always move at a speed of 50. Whereas if it's set to a value of about 0.1 or so, it's going to move around 10% some of the time because that's the minimum speed that it must go. You can see here if I play the animation, here is the result. The max air acceleration determines how fast a particle can change direction and how fast it can gain speed, as you can see on screen. The max air annular velocity defines how much a Boyd can accelerate in order to fulfill a rule. We will get into rules later on in this video, so you don't really need to worry about this right now. Personal space, you can probably already guess what this does, it's the radius around each of the Boyds. This is also a percentage of the particle size. Landing smoothness deals with collision objects. If a particle is headed straight for the ground, this slider will slow it down as it gets closer to the land. If this is turned off, the particle will slam full force into the collision. Underneath that, we have all of the settings for the land, max speed, acceleration, personal space, all of those we just talked about except they apply to the land. One setting that did change is the land stick force. This determines how strong a force field will affect the particles. In this example, you can see the force field has a strength of 3. The land stick force is set to 3 as well. You can see the particles don't move, but once I bring the land force to a value of 2, they will start to move because the force field is stronger than 2. This also acts a little bit weird because sometimes the particles will still move even if it's set at a higher number. So that's basically what it does. Next up on our list is we're going to talk about fighting voids. We can actually have particles fight each other using the voids particle system, and we're going to be creating that fight with Blender right now, so you can go ahead and follow along. Here we have just a basic cube and we're actually going to keep this in our scene, we're not going to delete it. We're going to move it over to the left side and then go over to the particle system and create a new one. Over in the physics setting we're going to switch it over to the Boyd's physics and then we're going to scroll down to the relations, the Boyd brain, and then the battle panel. We're going to open up all of these. So over in the battle panel we have a couple different options here. We have health, strength, aggression, accuracy, and range. And we'll be going through those in just a second. But how this works is we need to actually specify a relation. Then we need to tell in the Boyd brain to actually fight with the fight rule right here. So we're going to go ahead and delete the separate and the flock. And then add in a new rule and go underneath the fight option. 
Here you have a fight distance, and this is the maximum distance that the boys will actually fight. And then the flee distance is, of course, how far they will flee. Now, in order to get this to work, we need to add in a new relation. So I'm going to hit that plus sign, and then we need to select a target. So, of course, we're going to need two particle systems. I'm going to select my cube right here, shift D it, and then move it over to the right side. We also need to make sure this is a new particle system. So scroll up to the top and then click on that two button to create a new particle system. So over in the relations, we're going to select our first cube, click on the target object, and then select the cube. Underneath the relations, you have three options here. We have a friend, neutral, and enemy. Friend will mean that the particles will work together. Neutral means that they're not going to get angry at each other. Not, they're not going to fight. They're just neutral. And of course, the enemy is when they will actually fight each other. In this case, I want this cube to be the enemy. So I'm going to switch it over to enemy just like that. We'll select this cube here, select the target, and it's going to be this cube over here on the left side. And this one is going to be enemy, of course. So now what happens if we restart and play this, you can see the particles are going towards each other and they're actually fighting. In order to see this a little bit better, let's select an object to be the particles for each side. I'm going to press shift A, add in another cube, place it on the left, and then I'll press shift A, add in an icosphere and place it on the right. We'll select our first cube that we created, scroll down to the render tab, and then select render as halo to render as object. And then for the instant object, select the cube. I'm going to bring up the size so we can see them a little bit better and the number of particles I'm going to bring down to 100. I'm also going to set the lifetime up to 250, just like this. And then the end frame, I'm going to set to 100. And Blender just crashed. All right, here we are back in our scene. I have just recreated it. We have the cube over here, and then we have another cube with the icosphere as the particles. So now each of these have a relation, and it's both set to enemy, and the void brain is set to fight. Let's see what happens if we play this. You will see that the particles go towards each other and they start to fight. On the right side, you have the health and the strength. The health is just the health of the particles. And if it's at a lower number, the particles will die a lot quicker because the health is lower. Let's go ahead and test this out by setting the health down to 0.1. And over in the cubes, we're going to set the strength up to let's go with a value of 0.5. Now, if we restart and play this, you'll notice that the particles are actually flying away because they know they're not going to win the battle and they're just going to die because they have a lower health. To actually get the icospheres to fight the cubes over on the left, you need to set the aggression higher. Since the aggression is a little bit lower, you can see here the boys will fight this time's stronger enemy. So if this is lower, they're just going to flee because they know they're not going to win the fight. But if they have a very high aggression, let's go with a value of 25 they will actually fight each other. You can see they're still flying away, so it looks like we need to go higher. Let's go with a value of 100. And then if we play this, you can see the particles are actually fighting each other, even though the cubes are much stronger. And at a certain point, when a lot of the particles die, the aggression becomes too low, and so the rest of the particles will just flee because they know they're not going to win the battle. So let's go ahead and play this one more time. And you can see this sort of an effect. Let's actually change the health to a higher number. Let's go with 2. And then we'll change the health over here to a lower number, but we'll increase the strength. So let's go with a value of two. So now this one is a lot stronger, but this one has a lot more health. So now if we play it, you can see they're going to be fighting each other. And we can see this sort of an effect. We also have an accuracy and a range. The accuracy is the accuracy of each attack for the particles. The higher you set this to, the attacks will actually hit more often. And the range is how far the particles can attack at a certain distance. So you can see here, this is actually kind of cool. You can have a battle with the particles and it can create some really interesting results. Another thing you can do is if you shift D this cube right here, we'll go up to the particles and create a new one. I'm going to create a new relation and set the target over to this cube underneath. And I'm going to set it over to friend. So now these cubes are actually going to work together. If we select this cube, we'll add in another relation, select the cube up top, and then also set this one over to friend. So now if we restart and play it, these particle systems are going to work together to try to destroy the cubes over here on the right. And at a certain point, you can see the cubes will start to fly away because they know they're not going to win that battle. 
So there you go, that is how the fighting works in the particle system in the Boyd physics. Pretty cool, and you can create some really interesting results using this method. In the miscellaneous tab, there are three settings here, banking, pitch, and height. Banking deals with the rotation of the object. In this example, the top one is set to a value of two. You will see as it rotates around, it banks off to the side, whereas the one underneath with a value of zero, it has no banking and only rotates along the Z axis. The top one is very smooth, whereas the bottom one doesn't look that smooth at all. Pitch adds a bit of rotation to the side vector. This means that instead of having the particles move all the way around when they turn around, they will actually move off to the side and stay kind of low as you can see here. I'm not really sure exactly what height does. I've tested many different scenarios and it doesn't seem to make a difference. So if you know what the setting does, let me know in the comments down below. The boy brain is where all of the magic happens. Here is where you can set specific rules for the boys to follow. You can set multiple rules and the order in which they obey them is with the rule evaluation here. There are three options, average, random, and fuzzy. Average will set all the rules to have the same priority. Random, of course, will give a random roll to each of the particles. The fuzzy evaluation goes from top to bottom. The fuzziness is how hard a Boyd will try to follow a certain rule. One means it will stick to it completely and zero means it won't affect it at all. Now let's actually talk about the rules that you can add. The first one that we have here is the goal rule. This will set the particles to follow the object that is selected. If there is no object selected, then you can use the Boyd force field. Keep in mind though, it's not going to do anything unless the strength is set to a negative value. Then the particles will go towards that Boyd force field. You can also select in the settings to predict the movement of the goal. So if your object is moving around, it will predict the movement and go towards that goal. The avoid rule deals with predators and the Boyd particles will run away from them. This works very well with the Boyd force field as well because there is also a fear factor. If the fear factor is lower than the strength of the Boyd force field, the particles will run. If it's higher, then the particles will stay where they're at because they're not afraid of the predator. Avoid collision rule makes it so that the particles will avoid collisions as they get close to one. You can either set it to avoid other buoyed particle systems or deflectors, and deflectors of course are collision objects. In this example, there is a goal for the particles to reach. In front of that goal is a collision object. With no avoid collision, it will just go straight into the plane and smack right into it. With the deflectors checkbox turned on, it will slow down as it reaches the goal and try to move around the collision object. The order is also important. With the avoid collision below the goal rule right here, it won't have much of an effect. But once you move it above, the particles will slow down even more and try to go around the plane. Separate will just have the particles separate from each other, spreading outwards as you can see here. The area around is set by the personal space in the slider up at the top in the movement settings. The higher you set this to, the more the particles will spread outwards. Flock will have the boys copy the movement of a neighboring particle. If the particle moves, another particle will try to follow that direction. Follow the leader allows you to pick an object for the particles to follow. This is very similar to the goal rule. The three settings underneath, I did a lot of testing and for some reason I could not get them to work properly. The distance slider, what that is supposed to do is create a distance between the leader to follow. For some reason, this doesn't really seem to do anything though, even if it's at zero or 100. The line checkbox allows the particles to follow the leader in a line, and the queue size is how many particles are allowed to follow. The queue size also doesn't seem to make a difference though, even though it's set to zero or 100. So this setting seems to be bugged, but I'm not sure if I'm using it correctly. Average rule gives you an average velocity for all the particles, and this is the average based off of the max speed in the movement setting. The speed slider sets the percentage. The wander setting right here gives the particles some random velocity in a certain direction. The level is kind of the height for the particles. With it set to 1, the particles will not go that high. But with it set to 0, the particles will move up the Z axis as you can see.
And of course we have the fight option, which we already talked about a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and skip that one. And there you have it folks, that is the Boyd's physics in the particle system for Blender. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and this video did take a long time to make, so make sure you leave a like and comment down below what you would like to see next. If you are feeling generous, make sure to click that subscribe button to see more tutorials in the future. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.